So now we'll hit a series of questions about balancing equations. Balancing equations is a very personal thing. So I've got my way to do it. You might have ways you prefer to do it otherwise. So hopefully the way I talk through it will do nothing to confuse you. And hopefully in some way it will add to it. So anyway, first one, ammonia reacts with oxygen to give nitrogen to oxide and water. So there are the formulas. Complete the equation and they very nicely give us that we're having four and H3s. Now, first thing I always like to do on a computer is let's get some color coding in so we can distinguish it. So nitrogen's in blue, hydrogen's in sort of goldiness and oxygen's in red. So the trick with balancing equations is to balance it atom type by atom type, starting off with the easy ones to balance and ending up with the nasty ones. And the more that a particular atom occurs throughout an equation, the nastier it is. So I'd look at this and I'd say, well, nitrogen's nice because it's only in one place on each side. Hydrogen's nice because it's only in one place on each side. Oxygen's kind of nasty because while it's only in one thing on the left-hand side, it's there in two substances on the right-hand side. So I know I'm probably gonna leave oxygen till the end and hope that maybe by the time I get there, we won't have to balance it at all because it'll already be balanced. One can but hope. So anyway, the easy thing to start with here is I would say the nitrogens okay we got four nitrogens on the left hand side we want four nitrogens on the right hand side the only way we get four nitrogens on the right hand side is to stick a four in front of the NO like that now our nitrogens are good anything that we now do from here on to mess around with the um, NH3 or the NO we have to remember to adjust the nitrogens accordingly because they are now balanced now the next one to do i would say would be the hydrogens okay we've now got four times three or 12 hydrogens on the left therefore we want 12 on the right currently we've got two how do you turn two to 12 you multiply it by six so we need six waters now at this stage we can look at the oxygens we got two on the left we got four plus six or ten on the right so how do we turn the two on the left to ten balance out the right well we just need five of the o2s so there it is nicely balanced hopefully in a easy to follow stepwise fashion okay this question i've put in and included just to make you realize chemistry is not as hard as some of you want to make it barium hydroxide can be produced by adding barium oxide to water give the equation well there's barium oxide you got barium is two plus because it's an alkaline earth metal oxygen as oxide is o2 minus so BaO, water of course, H2O, and barium hydroxide. Well, hydroxide is OH, but it's OH minus. Barium is two plus, so we need two hydroxides. And when we now look at this, we see that we got one barium, one barium. We got one, two oxygens and two oxygens, and we got two hydrogens and two hydrogens. The examiners were so sweet for that one, really just testing, did you know the formulas? A little bit tough for this one, harmful gases, vehicle exhaust include carbon monoxide, nitrogen to oxide, catalytic converter, they converted nitrogen carbon dioxide. So give the equation. Well, we've got CO and NO and N2 and CO2. CO and NO are the reactants, N2 and CO2 are the products. Again, nicely color coded, start off by doing the easy ones. And I would say that the only nasty one here is oxygen because it occurs twice on this side. So we look at this and we say, well, let's look at carbons. And we got one carbon each, that's great, already balanced. Let's look at the nitrogens. We've got one nitrogen on the left, two on the right. So we need two on the left. The only way to get that is to put a two in front of the NO. Carbon's still looking good. Now let's balance the oxygens. Now this is sneakier. We got three currently on the left and there's two on the right. So we've got to have more oxygens on the right. Trouble is we can't turn two into three because the oxygens on the right only come in chunks of two. So we need more oxygens on the right. So let's put two CO2s there. And now we've got four oxygens on the right, two plus one on the left, but we saw three. So how can we get another oxygen on the left? Well, we just have to have another CO. So let's do that. Now, of course, we have messed with the carbons, but let's check the carbons. And we've got two and two, so we're in good shape there. Probably made more of a meal of that than was needed, but sometimes even the, the simpler ones with ones and twos can be a little bit daunting. Let's get a little bit more challenging. One way to convert calcium carbonate, there we are, to calcium phosphate, there we are, is to use phosphoric acid, there we are. 
balance the equation below for this reaction. So let's color code it first of all. And now again, looking for the simple ones, you can see from the amount of red there that obviously oxygens are disgusting. OK, and indeed we want to leave the oxygens till the very end. But calciums, the carbons, the hydrogens, the phosphoruses just all occur in one thing on each side. So let's just go through and balance those accordingly. So start with the calciums. We got one on the left, three on the right. So we need three on the left. So we need three of these calcium carbonates there. Next one we hit maybe the phosphorus. We got one phosphorus there. We got two phosphoruses there. So we need two of the H3. PO4s. Now we can do the carbons. We got three here. We want three over there. So we've got to have three CO2s. Could have done the carbons before the phosphorus, you know, whichever way floats your boat, depending how you're thinking. Let's look at the hydrogens now. We got six on the left. Right now, two on the right. How do we turn two into six? We'll we just need three waters. And now we better hope that the oxygens are balanced because anything that we do to perturb where we are now is going to require going through the whole process again. So let us optimistically check the oxygens. We've got 17 on the left. We've got three times three is nine. Two times four is eight. Nine plus eight is 17. And on the right, two times four is eight plus six plus three is 17. So with great joy and jubilation, We'll put a little answer box around that version of the equation. Another fun one that you've got a nice little starter for. Copper can be extracted from the mineral chalcopyrite right there. The mineral smelted by heating with air, i.e. heated with oxygen. And here's the equation for the reaction. Balance it. So again, make it color coded. You can see oxygen is absolutely yucky because they occur in three things on the right hand side. Iron's not exactly as tasty as one might have liked because they're two, um, two places on the right hand side. Let's go through, see what we can do, shall we? Start off with the coppers. That's a no brainer. We need four of those. But quite frankly, we could have done that at any old time. Now let's balance the sulfurs. We got four times two is eight. So we need a total of eight. SO2s. Now we need to do the ions. We've got four ions on this side. We've got one plus two is three on this side. The easiest way to get four is, of course, just to have two of the FeOs. So let's do that. And now we'll look at the oxygens. Two on the left, but fortunately that's the only thing that has oxygen on the left. On the right now we have two plus three plus 16, which I believe is 21. OK, so if you've got 21 and these only come in chunks of two, that would be 10 and a half O2s. You cannot, of course, have 10 and a half. So therefore, we got to multiply all the way through by two to clear that half. So now eight of those, 21 of those, eight, four, two and 16. What an awesome little equation. Big thing there is really just keep your head because it all flows quite nicely. And then, of course, just working out that you've got 21 oxygens here. So therefore, you can either multiply everything by two so that you would have 42 oxygens, which then splits nicely into 21 or just saying, well, 21 oxygen atoms is 10 and a half oxygen molecules multiplied by two to clear the half. Now, this question here looks like it doesn't belong because it's talking about enthalpy change and formation. Indeed, if you haven't done thermochemistry yet, skip this question and move on to the next one. But I thought it was worthwhile putting it in because of the way that in that last equation, we ended up with a fractional coefficient, 10 and a half oxygens, which we then, without a second thought, turned into an integer. But there are times in which fractional coefficients are allowed. And that is when you're talking about enthalpy changes of specific reactions. So um, ethanol is a liquid at room temperature. Who cares? Write the equation that corresponds to the standard enthalpy change of formation of ethanol. Well, the standard enthalpy change is where we make one mole of ethanol. One mole. Can't mess with that. OK, and we make it from its elements in their natural state. Well, the natural state of carbon is, of course, carbon solid. Um, natural state of hydrogen is H2 gas. Natural state of oxygen is O2 gas. 
Well, we need two carbon atoms, so that's fine, two carbon solid. We need five plus one or six hydrogen atoms, that comes from three hydrogen molecules, but we only need one oxygen atom, so we can only use half an O2. And we don't clear that, we don't multiply all this through to give us a whole O2, because that would give us two moles of this. And by definition, the standard the video formation equation is making one mole. OK, so there are times in which fractional coefficients are vital, and that's when you're dealing with thermochemical equations like this. But if you're just balancing an equation, convention says get rid of those fractions. Anyway, let's go back to another normal old balancing phosphorus 5 chloride. This PCl5 reacts with water, form phosphoric acid and hydrogen chloride. Equation isn't balanced, balance it. Let's make it pretty. So oxygen, one on each side, phosphorus, one on each side, chlorine, one on each side, and the nasty atom here is hydrogen. So what shall we do first? Well, the phosphori, phosphoruses, are balanced. So we'll look at the chlorines. We got five here, so we need five on the right-hand side, so five HCLs. Then we can shockingly look at the oxygens. The oxygens are not the nasty atoms. We got four on the right, so we need four on the left, so we need four H2O. And now we can look at the hydrogens and we better hope the hydrogens are right because otherwise we'll have to mess around with things that have already been messed with. So on the left hand side, four times two is eight. On the right hand side, three plus five is eight. And so we joyfully circle that final version of the equation. So a long-ish type question here, simply because they've got lots of words that we need. So one lab method for making ethine is by reacting 1,2-dibromoethane with an excess of alcoholic potassium hydroxide solution. What's an alcoholic doing in the lab? I don't know. So anyway, 1,2-dibromoethane is that. We can readily see it's C2H4Br2 reacting with KOH to make ethine, which is this, right? Now you don't necessarily explicitly know that you ethines and alkynes because you haven't necessarily studied them, but you should know that the YNE means a triple bond. Eth, of course, means two carbons. Thus, ethine is a C2H2. And then you're also told potassium bromide and water are the other products. So that's the equation. Let's balance it, shall we? And of course, beautifully colored to make it look, I hope, if not more intimidating, at least pretty. So anyway, looking at this, obviously hydrogens are going to be the nasty atom type here. Carbons, bromines, potassiums and oxygens each occur just once on each side. And indeed, the carbons are even balanced, two there, two there. So let's start off with the bromines, two bromines on the left, so we need two bromines on the right, so we have to have two of the KBRs there. Now let's look at the Ks, currently one on the left, two on the right, so we need two of the KOHs. Now let's look at the oxygens, two on the left and one on the right, so we need two of the waters. And now at this stage, we've balanced everything, so we better hope the hydrogens are nice, but let's go ahead and check them. Four plus two is six on the left-hand side, and two plus four is six on the right-hand side. Thus, we are beautifully balanced. We can circle that final version of the equation. As our penultimate equation, one that uh, struck terror in some of my students years ago, simply because of some of the unfamiliar numbers. Balance the equation for the reaction of pentaborane 9, so that's B5H9 with steam, and you're told that it turns into boric acid and H2, which is a very nice thing to be told. So make it pretty. Hydrogens, again, are going to be the nasty elements here, but borons and oxygens, relatively straightforward. Let's balance the borons. We got five on the left, so we need five on the right. So we've got to have five of the boric acids. Now we'll balance the oxygens. We got 15. Now you see, that's something that immediately makes people query. Have I screwed up? This seems like it's too many. No, five times three is 15. So therefore, we need 15 waters. Now again, we hopefully have got everything um, pretty. Other than the hydrogens, let's look at the hydrogens. Right now, we've got nine plus 30, so 39 on the left-hand side, and we got 15 there, which means we need another 
39 minus 15 is 24. Fortunately, we have the H2. We can have as many of those as we want. We want 24 more H atoms, which means 12 H2 molecules. And there is the final version. Like I say, straightforward. Um, you have to, of course, use more than your fingers. You might have to borrow the fingers of the person next to you in order to count up some of the oxygens and the hydrogens. But the thing to remember is just keep your head about you and don't stress if you see nasty numbers. And now the final equation. When ethanoic acid is heated with urea, the products are ethanamide, carbon dioxide and ammonia. This is much more a practice of can you get formulas from names. Ethanoic acid is CH3COH. Urea, we're told, is N2CONH2. Ethanamide, well, the eth means two carbon atoms. The amide means it's got a carbon double bond O, NH2. So therefore, you have a CH3 to provide you with the rest of the molecule, carbon dioxide we know, and ammonia we know. Put in the appropriate pluses and the arrows, and we look at this and we think, oh, how yucky. However, not necessarily. Let's look at carbons, one, two, three on the left, one, two, three on the right. Hydrogens, three plus one is four, plus two plus two is eight. Three plus two is five, plus three is eight. Starting to get excited here. Oxygens, two there, plus one there is three. One there, plus two there is three. And nitrogens, one plus one is two. One plus one is two. So this equation, shockingly, is already balanced. So I put that in there just to emphasize at the end of the thing, especially after a nasty one with 15s and 5s and 12s in it, that sometimes equations when you just write the formulas out, are already balanced.